Hello and welcome to Ellison Legals in case you missed it. We are now in August so we will go over July's posts. Uh, just quickly, disclosures. Ellison Legal has limited liability under a scheme approved by professional standards legislation. And this video is not intended to give you legal advice, so please don't take it as legal advice. So if you do need some legal advice, please go see your legal practitioner to get some advice that is tailored to your specific situation. So, on to July's posts. Um, just looking at this here, we had five this um, last month. Um, so, and it was all about leases, retail commercial leases, um, and other things that go along with that. So. The first post was just outlining that there are differences between commercial leases and retail leases. So retail leases are a type of commercial lease, but um, when we look at commercial leases, we're looking at leases that are not typically retail. So we could be looking at things like, say, an office suite. Retail leases um, come under a slightly different category. Um, under the Retail Leases Act, so um, that that's what gives it its the, the the differences between the two. But what it is that we do here, Ellison Legal, is that we give legal advice on commercial and retail leases. We do not give advice on residential leases. Um, okay, so the second post was about commercial leases. So like I said, it could be, say, like an office suite, doctor's surgery, dentist, just um, something that's not commercial. Um, you could have, say, um, a, a, say, an office suite that um, happens to be in a shopping centre and then that will change the dynamics of that. Um, so, and, and that's where we go into our retail leases. Um, so that was the third post, retail leases. Is So we need to be careful and figure out, does your lease fall under the Retail Leases Act? There are some leases that may appear to be commercial and are in fact not commercial. And so there are certain rules about this. And those are usually quite large complexes, places like um, Target, Kmart, Coles, Woolworths, Big W, places like that. So where there's a large area um, of space that's being taken up within a shopping centre complex, something like that, um, that's something that you would think is a retail lease, but it's not, it's a commercial lease. So specifics need to be looked at. So those were the three posts at the um, the, the first three posts of July was um, knowing that there's a difference between commercial and retail leases. The second post was about uh, what is a commercial lease and the third post was about what is a retail lease. Now, there were two more posts. The fourth post, uh, we wanted to draw your attention to the registration of leases. So, if you have a lease, if you are a tenant and you have an interest in property, you have a lease, check if it has been registered with the Land Titles Office. There's going to be some situations where it's mandatory to have it registered and there are some situations where it's not mandatory to have, have it registered. If it's registered, fantastic, you've told the Land Titles Office, I've got an interest in this property, if anything goes awry, you're protected. If it's not registered at the Land Titles Office, if something goes wrong, um, what happens to your interest in that property? So if, let, let's just look at more, maybe more smaller complexes. So I don't want to pick on the big places like um, major shopping centres or anything like that, but let's look at a small, smaller type of um, complex or even just a standalone. If your landlord, uh, say, runs into monetary issues, banks taking over, um, and your interest is not registered, what happens to your 
what happens to your business? Can can you be evicted? Um, what what's going to happen? So it's really important, if possible, if you can, have your lease registered at the land titles office. The last post, so put that down now. <laughs> The last post was about agreements for lease. Now, this can be useful in times where you're thinking about entering into a lease, uh, you've spoken with the landlord or you're the landlord spoken with the tenant and you've come to general terms, just a general idea of what you want the lease to look like, but you still want to nut out some issues, but you kind of want to lock something in. Um, you can consider an agreement for lease. There might be situations where um, the property's not built yet. Um, there's a developer, they've knocked down some places, they're building it and they're securing, I don't know, the residence on top and the shops on the bottom or whatever the case may be, but they want to secure those shops that they are going to come in, they are going to do those leases, the fit out is going to be done to exactly what the tenants want um, those are situations where you'd use an agreement for lease. So, and that's something else that is important for clients to understand is that an agreement for lease is not a lease. They are two different documents. So when you go speak with your legal practitioner and say, I'm entering into a lease, and then you give them these two documents, an agreement for lease, and then also the lease, um, and then on top of that, if it's a retail lease, then you've also got um, a disclosure statement. So that's three documents and you're being charged for it. That's why, because there are there's more to it than just a lease. Um, so those are considerations to think about. Um, something that we do here at Ellison Legal is the leases. We really enjoy doing leases. Um, so if you do have any questions, drop us a line, let us know um, what your query is and until September we'll be going over this month's posts of August. Take care. Bye.